on our, our pages and whatnot that my team just showed to me. And it was a word where I began to prophesy about Hawaii, a specific prophecy about Hawaii, um, a, a heat wave hitting the beach, on the beach, all these things that took place. Um, I wanna watch this real quick and then I wanna get into what I think is actually happening. So remember, this is a prophetic word with no context when I gave it. The Lord spoke this to me and I did my very best to relay it to you. And we recorded it on September 20th, back in 2022. So we just went and pulled the clip from that, but let's take a look at this. The island made me think it was either Hawaii or it was some of the islands out in, in the sea, the tropical islands, the Caribbean islands, but it sense, my sense was maybe it was Hawaii. I'm not sure the exact island, but it was islands like this. And I remember being somewhat between the beach, in the middle of the beach, and the tree line in this vision. And as I was, suddenly, I was talking with people. I had, uh, you know, friends, family, uh, you know, our children, all these people were there. And suddenly, a bright light came over the horizon, and it flashed. And the bright light came over the horizon, and I remember thinking, we have but moments, but moments to escape this bright light. And it was coming over the horizon. And I remember turning my back to the light and running for metal doors. And there were large, large metal doors, and we began to run to them. And as we ran, I just had gotten into the door when I felt the heat begin to hit my body. And the heat was intense and severe. And I made it in and shut the door as the heat began to hurt my skin, and I made it into the door. And the Spirit of the Lord began to minister to me and say, we need to pray because there is more coming than we understand. There is more coming than we understand. So this whole picture here of the narrative of the Hawaii fire, I believe the Lord showed us this so we could pray. I believe it's something that we need to consider uh, what is happening. Let me look right at you for a moment. Um, what is taking place, I believe, is that God is showing things in advance, and it is a serious event that just took place. And I remember this vision very clearly. I remember having it. And the fire was, or the heat was hitting my skin at the time. And I remember thinking, my goodness, how are people going to survive? And it's interesting that we just came across this. You actually could probably go find it on YouTube or Facebook from a year and a half ago. But I sense so clearly that there's more to this that's now going to be uncovered. I believe there's a lot more behind it. So if we could, I want to show it one more time because the Lord began to stir me over this and saying to pray because of what has taken place. So one more time, I want you to see this word, this prophetic word I released back in September 20th in 2022 and how we went into this. And please, right before I show this to you, please repost this, share this. I want to thank the partners of this ministry. Uh, if you want to partner, you go to josephz.com. Thank you so much. But I want to show you this prophetic clip again about Hawaii. And I believe there's more to it. And the Lord instructed me to dig in a little deeper was basically the takeaway at the end of this prophecy. One more time, let's, let's watch this together. The island made me think it was either Hawaii or it was some of the islands out in, in the sea, the tropical islands, the Caribbean islands, but it sense, my sense was maybe it was Hawaii. I'm not sure the exact island, but it was islands like this. And I remember being somewhat between the beach, in the middle of the beach, and the tree line in this vision. And as I was, suddenly, I was talking with people. I had, uh, you know, friends, family, uh, you know, our children, all these people were there. And suddenly, a bright light came over the horizon, and it flashed. Fire. And the bright light came over the horizon, and I remember thinking, we have but moments, but moments to escape this bright light. And it was coming over the horizon. And I remember turning my back to the light and running for metal doors. And there were large, large metal doors, and we began to run to them. And as we ran, I just had gotten into the door when I felt the heat begin to hit my body. And the heat was intense and severe. And I made it in and shut the door as the heat began to hurt my skin, and I made it into the door. And the Spirit of the Lord began to minister to me and say, we need to pray because there is more coming than we understand. There is more coming than we understand. So this was given on September 20th, 2022 on the live broadcast. Uh, kind of a, a very serious thing. Let's, um, let's prepare the next clip about the, the word about the army that they're building. Let's just get it ready. Uh, I'm going to talk about that in a moment. But just before we do, I want to talk to you about this. Let me say something about this to you. 
This whole thing that just happened in regards to uh, the fires and all of it, first of all, what a tragedy. And I want to ask the question too, where are the children? Where are those children at? We've got to get down to that, the bottom of that. I mean, these people are blowing it off and they're acting like it's no big deal. What an absolute horrific thing that's taken place. But not only this, I saw that vision and there's a word, there's a, like a, it's a, a, a Latin word that's called sensus plenier. And it means a deeper, fuller meaning. And sometimes when you see things, you see something one way and then it unfolds another. I also believe that vision could not have just been a glimpse of the fire that devastated that area of Maui. I also believe I saw something that had to do with nuclear blast, a nuclear blast, something that would come across the scene or, or a weapon of mass issue like that, and it would bring heat. So we know in part, we prophesy in part, but there's more to this than meets the eye. There's a greater scenario going on. I believe that California is in, in danger right now. I believe there's things going on with that. The fact that insurance companies are pulling out of there. Now, do I believe that it's the end of the world and the apocalypse? No, I don't. I just believe that there's serious events taking place and we need to pray and we need to do that. Now, all of this is a crisis fatigue narrative and they're trying to break the hearts, break the minds of people, but thank God you don't break. The spirit of God is with you and it shall be well with you. When I saw this fire in the vision, it was terrifying. And I remember thinking, I can't outrun this, I can't do it. And I was able to get to a barrier and it still burned me. And yet there was metal that was being impacted as you saw in the vision. And there was people we were talking to and it was on a beach and whatnot. And that's a lot of the footage we've seen involved the beach. Now, at, at the end of the day, I believe that there will be more and more exposure. And here's what I'm praying right now. And the reason I believe there's more and the reason I showed that clip to you is not only I think it's very fascinating that the Lord prophesies things to us in advance that we didn't even realize. You can actually go find that clip of that fire word or the, the great heat in, in Hawaii. You can go find that word from that day. You can look it up September 20th, 20. 22 uh, from our live broadcast so you know that we didn't just come up with that but the other thing is I believe that the depth of what's going to be revealed is going to be very astonishing because we've got citizen journalists we've got watchman journalists we've got prophetic journalists we've got people that are looking for things and I believe the Lord is going to bring an exposure to not just Maui and the horrible things that have happened there but many of this stealing of our children the stealing of our of our families and what's going on with agricultural assaults and all these arenas. I believe God is going to make a way. Now, they want to begin to bring out more and more devastation so they can mechanize and weaponize people to do their bidding. And I believe these fires, it's part of the crisis fatigue. I believe the famines and droughts they're trying to induce are part of the crisis fatigue. A fascinating word that I just gave recently also was this word um, about zombies of all things. Can we show that word real quick, quick? And then I'm going to show you this clip, but let's go to the word about zombies just very quickly. I want you to see this one. This is fascinating. I've now, seen this for a week. Let's show it. I'll submit it to you. Please discern and pray. Here's the watch word I'm seeing. And I, I don't know how soon this is or if it's right around the corner, but I believe just like UFOs, the climate narrative, all the stuff they're talking about, there's going to be a heightened word or a sensitivity to this word. Back in August. Yep, I said it. Crazy. Zombies. Cra zombies. Okay, we'll stop here. <laughs> Crazy days because we have, um, we have, then we aired a video showing people that have substances in their system and it's called the zombie drug. They're doing all these things. But another recent report came out and I believe this is all leading towards a narrative that's gonna be even more extreme than what we're seeing now. But let me show you the clip I was about to show you. So we prophesied I saw zombies and um, we'll share this with you. And I have a, I'm getting at something here. Let's take a look at this clip if we could. Well, they're calling it zombie army. You Men riddled with HIV, mental disorders, Let's stop tuberculosis, here. and more. This is the zombie the army, is... the HIV mental disorders, hemorrh hemorrhagic conditions, tuberculosis, now fit for military service. They're saying all these people with HIV, 
mental problems, blood problems, tuberculosis, they are now fit for military service as Kiev's so desperate for scrapping uh, barrel, scraping the barrel, that it's just lowered the bar even more on its standards for cannon fodder is what they're calling this. So they're, they're saying in a, in a critical way against these decisions that they're using human lives as cannon fodder. They're just trying to go down this road. Um, and it's a, it's a fascinating thing with a number of uh, lost personnel exclusively revealed by Intel Republic running into hundreds of thousands and most healthy soldiers in pick above Kiev's western backed junta wants to fight to the last now this is a wild circumstance let's keep going and i'm going to comment on this fit for duty fit for military service zombies that they can basically throw into the meat grinder zombies as cannon fodder and now europe is getting involved in this remember all those military age men those refugees who fled you to poland and other countries mm -hmm. throughout europe and the west well now you is asking those countries, please send those men back. We need those men. We need those men to fight and on the front lines. Poland leading that charge. Poland says it will round up you, the wow. military age and extradite them in order to send them to. Mm. So what we see is they are now utilizing people that are highly damaged. Um, and this is also part of, God forbid, but also part of the Mark of the Beast precursor practice serum that people are highly damaged and they're already getting it in people's psyche that this is a normal thing for people to be highly messed up but still functional. And they're calling them zombies. And the reason is, and for this particular picture, they're calling them basically zombie soldiers, zombie drones, people that are very messed up in their bodies. They once wanted nothing to do with them. Now they're saying, hey, wait, come on back here. We have a use for you cannon fodder. Uh, we're going to use you to go to the front lines and, you know, just give up your most precious commodity, your life. And this is something that's happening. Now, what a tragedy, what a sick thing that's taking place. But there is more and more of this that is, is coming to the scene, that is on the horizon. I believe this Maui fire was a trigger. I believe the balloons that went over the, the, the nation just several months back was a trigger. I believe that the way they're derailing trains, the way they're doing all these things has been a trigger and trying to pollute things. They're be beginning to put stuff in the atmosphere, all of it. And then you're seeing guys like Pervy Gates, you know, what a pervert sicko. And then you're also recognizing now they're beginning to use more and more of this terminology of zombies. The the zombie terminology. Now, I believe it's a beginning point, but I believe, I sense this very strongly, as we call this prophetic journalism, I believe they will bring more of that out to a higher level till finally people begin to say they are zombies or people are going to believe in it or they're going to induce something that is really scary. And I do have to tell you today, I have to tell you today, uh, I'll get to the board in a second. I got a few more things I want to, I want to get on here with this, but I, I, I about, I got a prophetic word I want to get into in a moment. Now we also recognize there's so much going on that they're trying to stop the normalcy of society, meaning they want to change everything. That's why these companies have been under uh, attack, so to speak, and being forced to push the alphabet gang agenda. And as they're doing so, then they know they're going to lose money, but they ha they're in a rock and a hard place, so they begin to do it. And we have to protest it because we got to stand up for what's right. Um, another thing you're seeing is a limitation. If you'll remember, I prophesied the Lord shared something with us and I shared it to the best of my ability uh, about three months in advance, maybe even more, that farmers would rise up. And then even before that, several months in advance, that truckers would rise up. And I believe we'll see more with that. There's another rise up of truckers and the shipping industry that will yet again take place. And it's because they're going to pressurize these guys right into a place where they've got to act because not only is their livelihood at stake, in addition to their livelihood, because this AI tech is going to take over some of the shipping industry and they will push for this and it'll be ultimate control. But one of the things that they will see is not only is it going to affect and impact their livelihood, they're also going to be impacted knowing what this will do to society and the possibility of shortages at the flip of a switch. So let me give you kind of a, a very detailed account of what they're doing to the trucking industry right now. This is really important, how they want to push electric trucks. Let's, let's watch this. Uh, how's it going uh, especially for the food supply chain uh, of America. And these changes were also made without checking the supply, uh, the supply chain challenges that we have. They just decided without, you know, consulting with, with, with the truckers of the supply chain. 
you know, the supply chain has a safety stock, but the rule's always been, uh, especially with food, you know, the less uh, stock. The, the okay, let's stop here just for one second. The He's the vice president. He's the vice president of JKC Trucking, and he's saying they're trying to push electric trucks on them. They're pushing electric trucks, they're pushing it back, but the changes they're making are not even being run through a grid work. They're just being decided really fast, just ramming this on these guys, saying, you will do this. And they're bringing these changes, and now he's saying, we are being faced with this, and the regulations are getting so strict on the people that bring us food. What is wrong with these elites? but we know what's wrong with them. This is not by accident. They want to bring everybody to their knees so they're ultimately in control and everything goes digital and even including shipping, industry, AI-driven, everything, but they'll be sitting at the top of that pyramid telling us what we can and cannot do. And then you add a digital global currency to this and suddenly Bob's your uncle, so to speak. They're in charge. But let's finish a couple thoughts he has about the stats on if trucking ever were shut down, how quickly things would go into disarray. The, the food supply stock is, 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 is super thick. To give you an idea, if all the trucks stop in America, we run out of, you know, the stores would start running out of food within uh, 48 to 72 hours. Uh, it would be very quickly. Just to give you an idea, all goods, you know, trucks, all goods, 70% of all wow. goods are trucks. In, in America, so you know I mean, if people say, well, we put it on the train, the train's not gonna save us because we, we have such a developed uh, transportation supply chain that this would this would just, you know, decapitate, decapitate the supply chain if we stop. I always say this technology, you know I mean, is, is being- Going electric, way too fast going electric. Testing and data. And, and truckers number one need an affordable hybrid truck, I would say with two systems of power. Um, if one shuts down or breaks, the other one continues. You know, uh, reasonable right now, diesel engine. My diesel engine goes down, I have, you know, no, no, no back. So let's so stop it here. Something. What you recognize he is saying is he's trying to just deal in logic, but these folks are not dealing in logic. They're not dealing in logic. They're dealing in a religion. This climate thing is a religion. The need to push tech is a religion. The religion says, we'll inform you, and if you don't fight back against it and stop us, well, that's your permission. So the religious institution of global takeover, which is ultimately driven by the Antichrist spirit, truly is what they want to bring through. Now, let me, let me give you another clip here, and this is important because we've prophesied this for quite some time. We've prophesied that women of fire would rise. I can show this to you another time, the clip on it. But women of fire would rise. We'd begin to see women standing up and we would see basically what people are now calling mama bears, the soccer moms saying, hey, not all right. You can't touch our kids. And um, a dear friend of ours, uh, who, you know, Jenny Donnelly, she, she stood up and said, hold up, there's a word that's out now and saying that when will people wake up? Well, when they come for the children. And I believe we've shared that. Other really awesome prophetic voices have shared this. And now there's action being taken. And I'll tell you, we're seeing this now. And I believe the mamas, the mama bears, the anointed women of God are going to stand up and say, you can do a lot of things, but you can't touch my children. They have this maternal instinct to even lay down their life for their children. So in this instance, just one instance, you see a mama bear standing up and she's standing against the school board. And it's, it's interesting because she says, you know, at the end of her talk, I want to pray. And this man from the panel says, oh, let's, oh, we, we can't do that. He's like, look, I love prayer. Just a spineless, gutless wonder. You know, uh, you know, a, a, probably a beta male. But he's coming out and just saying, you know, you really... Um, I love prayer. Don't get me wrong. So then they begin to, as a group, recite the Lord's Prayer together, and they shut it down. He's all flustered and frustrated since he loves prayer so much. What an antichrist plant, right? Okay, anyway, let's watch this very quickly. I think this will bless the mama bears out there. Pay attention to this one, because this is you. If you guys don't mind, I'd like to pray for Suffolk Public Schools with all of you. If you'd like to take a moment, bow your heads, please. What a hero. She's a hero. Excuse me. I apologize. We can't do that. Why can't we? Me. I like to pray for our students in our school. That's not in what you signed up to do, ma'am. Well, it's in regards to all of this. It's a transparency, accountability. I'm praying that we do do that. Ma'am. No, ma'am. 
You ask that you get back to on to your topic. No one that is stopping. my topic, sir. Well, then it's not permitted at this time. To pray for our schools is not permitted. That's correct. Okay. Yes. So now each of you hear this. If anybody would like to pray with me after the meeting outside, I'd invite you because I think that that's the only way that we're going to come together is through God and our faith. I like her. And and those who are doing this, working for children, or under, uh, any other reason, should I ask that God puts them under conviction. Have a good evening, and thank you all. Be it's blessed. not over, though. Thank you. Um, I do want to clarify. I want to clarify. I object to prayer. I believe that we should, man should always pray. I mean, I love <laughs> prayer. But this is not the place per the law. Per the law. They always, let's stop this for one second. One second. They always say, this is the law. You can't separate. You can't do church and state, church and state. Yeah, well, when that was written, if you really drop down to it, it means that the state needs to get out of the church. That's what it really means. But yet they had no problem, these type of uh, overlords, they had no problem, these wicked, spineless people, had no problem allowing the state to come in during the 2020 crisis and shut churches down, acting like it was law. Acting like it was law. What happened to separation of church and state? How about the government get out of the church, right? You recognize that picture, but let's finish because this has a, a very good ending. Speak to it. Mm. At this time, we're going to go to recess. Okay. Ask the officers to remove them. <laughs> officers, during recess, can you um, clear the room? They're praying. Okay, let's stop there. There's a civil disobedience that will come. You keep touching the children and eventually the... Oh. That gets me really emotional. I apologize. I try not to go there. But when I see them all standing like that, that's what believers do. We stand up under persecution. Believers stand up. And you know what they do? They stand up. They don't even know fully what to do, but they know that they can serve God. They know that they can pray. So when I see the mama bears doing that and they're all standing and they're like, you know, should we have them removed? Let's, let's have them removed. There it is, that Antichrist spirit. You get snapshots of it and people are just standing up and praying. They're blessing the place. And yet they're saying, should we have him remove that guy? So he couldn't believe that they would dare to cross him and all this. And he's just like, well, you know, I, oh, I got to tell you, the Lord is going to call mamas to stand. And mamas, listen to me. We need you. We need women preachers. We need women of God to stand up and, and bear the marks of Jesus and stand up for their kids. Your prayers, mama, mean more to this world than we even know how to convey to you how to convey to you. Let's look at these clips very quickly about what I believe is a portal that people saw with their eyes from the realm of the spirit into the natural, and we'll go through this. Let's look at this clip from 2009 on National News. Scientists from all over the world are trying to figure out what caused a mysterious blue light to spiral in the sky over Norway on Wednesday. CBS News correspondent Sheila McVicker has the latest on the mystery. Sheila, good morning. Good morning, Harry. Mysterious light indeed, a light appearing high in the Arctic sky, baffling those who saw it and exciting a lot of comment. Early yesterday morning, just before dawn, this appeared in the Norwegian sky. That's Norwegian for what the heck is that? A blue light <laughs> what the heck small is at that? first growing into a spiral and then disappearing into what appeared to be a black hole. In the northern community of Trondelag and on a Norwegian military base, cell phones snap. The black video hole is strange. To, it's one thing when you see the spiral and, you know, the, the trail coming out of it and that. But when it turns into a black hole, that's what also got my attention. There's some people, and I can't see it in this video, but I've heard people speculate or say that they could see what looked like a craft or some kind of object in there. And then that it went away as the black hole closed or open. It's an interesting point of view nonetheless, but I'll let you decide, but I'm, I'm bringing this out for a reason. Let's keep watching. Rolled and bloggers got busy. A spiral of light moving uh, and then suddenly stopping. There's still a lot of 
speculation to what it could be. The Arctic sky is no stranger to atmospheric phenomena. The northern lights and the seasonal flight of Santa just two. But so anyway, so the point is there's a lot going on. I want to show you another video with this. Uh, the next video shows this, uh, a, a number of cell phone videos, a number of issues that are on it. You recognize what's going on, that it could be this, but so you see some like amateur photos, videos of this event, maybe other events like it, but I think it's just many different points of view on this same event. Let's look at that video. I want you to see this and it's interesting. See it? There's the black hole. See how it gets big. People screaming. <laughs> That's nice. Oh, that's not for death. Tucson talk. Oh, how hard it will That's Norwegian for a thousand things. If I if I. Folk på Myre i Vesterån trodde ikke sine egne øyne da de så denne uidentifiserte ildkula på himmelen rett før klokka åtte i morgen. Fy faen! You can see it here. Hopefully it's showing, but it's a grainy video, cell phone video. The spiral. There's the black hole. Tonight, Norwegian authorities are investigating strange lights seen in the Arctic sky. The spiraling white light was seen for several minutes Wednesday morning. Locals say the light appeared to be bigger than the moon. Thousands of Norwegians bombarded the Meteorological Institute to ask what that light could have possibly been. There's a black hole. Everyone asking, what created that giant blue pinwheel in the sky? Speculation has settled firmly on a failed Russian rocket test. Russia's defense ministry has refused to comment, but military sources are telling leading newspapers that there was a test of a Russian Bulava intercontinental Could ballistic be. missile that failed yesterday. It had previously been announced that there would be tests of the Bulava in the region between December 7th and 14th, and specifically from 2 a.m. to 9 a.m. on Wednesday morning. We have to honestly Russian look newspaper. at all that. We've got to Gigantic honestly look at it. spiraling vortexes appear in the skies of Norway and Sweden. 2009. Thousands of people in northern Norway and Sweden were roused from their beds by concerned family and friends to witness an incredible celestial event. Some were just curious about the unusual light display. Others were frightened for their lives when they saw the massive white spiral with the blue tail growing at immense speed with what appeared to be a black hole at the center. There had recently been serious concerns raised about atomic testing at the nearby Large Hadron Collider in Switzerland. There we go. So this here is the large, I'm going to keep this image here, the, the Large Hadron Collider in Switzerland. You know, they have a, a sister facility that is in uh, Oak Ridge, Tennessee, and other places actually in America and other locations. China actually is building one that will dwarf this one in Switzerland. It is absolutely unbelievable how big it is. Now, you hear me talk about this sometimes, but this is really vital. And the reason I'm bringing this out is we, we need to honestly look at these things. Could it be just you know a rocket that went out of control? Yes, it could. But there's a lot of people that speculate, and not just speculate, they're, they're experts in the space, that say this is what it looks like, and the reports of portals always look this way, whether they're high in the sky or low to the ground. They say they open with a spiral, and you see this many times in these type of writings and the way people presume that portals work. They, they show this, and this is what we're looking at. These plans for Project Bluebeam is to stage an elaborate worldwide fake alien invasion with UFOs that will be seen in the sky. These will either be made on this planet with secret technology, CGI, by craft operated by black budgets and military, or advanced holographic imagery. That was advanced holographic imagery. So what they're doing is showing you 
what happens when you go down the holographic imagery road and what they can do in a public way. If you would, repost this right now. we got so much to get into today. This is going to be really important. I have a now word to share with you about this very issue because I had a prophetic moment actually about three, four years ago where I experienced this. Please share this right away because somebody's going to need to hear it. We're going to bring you information that brings you peace and, and data that doesn't we're not meaning to scare you. We want to prepare you uh, for the future. And if you do share this, thank you. And also, I want to thank the partners and friends of this ministry. Together, we're building lives by the voice of God. And just because there's so many new viewers and so many new people, the way you partner, the way you do it is at josephz.com, where you can text the keyword to this number, give to 719 259 0029. We do that to avoid scams and for new people that are here. And if you're a partner, thank you. And if you want to become a partner, our team will reach out to you. We love you. But let's keep going on this. I want to watch this one more time. Now, this is a holographic augmented reality scenario in a very public way that they're representing that this is indeed what they're going to be able to do in the sky. Now, you hear the voice, you hear the unique music, all of that, but it's talking about the high potential for group or social, very wide scale deception where they could project these type of holographic things into the sky. Now, this is a very uh, simple version of it, but again, let's watch it and listen. He's talking about Project Bluebeam, something we've prophesied about and discussed, and I want you to please consider this again. Watch this. But these plans for Project Bluebeam is to stage an elaborate worldwide faked alien invasion faked. of UFOs that will be seen in the sky. These will either be made on this planet with secret technology driven by craft operated by black budgets and military or advanced holographic imagery. And the third one is it could be real alien stuff, meaning they're not real aliens. I don't believe in aliens, but I'm talking about real entities that appear in the sky and they present themselves as aliens. And as we've prophesied so much, they're ultimately going to continue to bring out more and more until they bring out ultimate disclosure. The ultimate disclosure, well, I believe where they actually speak to one of these things and they have the, a moment where they show them the world. They show the world these entities and items. And now you've seen that they're bringing out these, these caskets of, of what they're saying are hundreds of year, years old sarcophaguses of alien bodies and whatnot. This is just the beginning. It's everything we've been prophesying and, and more like it. So let's, let's keep going here for a moment because I believe what's happening is, is a number of years ago, I had this moment where I was caught up into a vision. I was in the mountains with my son. We were walking through just a, a setting in the woods and by a river. And as I was doing this, I began to get caught away and I saw something. And now when this happens, you know, I, I knew where I was. I wasn't completely caught up in a trance. I've only had that happen a, a couple times in my life. But in this particular instance, I had the Holy Spirit draw my attention to a circumstance that was happening. And when I did, I looked up and I saw this giant creature looking entity thing that I knew was not real. I knew it was something being shown to me. I knew I wasn't having a figment of my imagination also or a psychotic episode. I actually just saw something and I'm watching this and I'm, I'm looking at it and it was like this giant creature coming through the forest that what I knew was not real. And I said, Lord, what am I looking at? And I heard the words augmented reality. Now, this is way before this stuff began to really be mainstream and come out. Now, there was all kinds of visual reality or, or <laughs> virtual reality goggles and all this stuff. Yet I had this encounter and the Lord began to minister something to me and say, you need to prepare your heart to see things that you, you just wouldn't believe you're seeing. And I know Luke 21, the book of Luke chapter 21, it talks about there will be things coming upon the earth that men's hearts will fail them as they look at it. As things begin to come upon the earth, men's hearts will fail them. It will bring terror to them to such a level because they can empirically observe it. They know what's going on and it is terrifying in that. So at the same time, there is going to be with this. Now, now hear me. I'm going to show you something very interesting and it's it's out there but i want to show you another thing in just a moment first of all remember they have this technology to do augmented reality or project project digital holograms into the air this is out there they can do this to a level 
And if they can do it and the public sees this, even on a screen as we're seeing it, imagine what they can do with all the unlimited resources available to the powers that be. Now, <clears throat> in this same picture, you've got to recognize not only do I believe there's a deception coming for UFOs, aliens, false religions, all of it. We know the book of Revelation says they will call fire down from heaven, signs and wonders. That could be all the ways that they've been incinerating things and cities and whatnot and, and uh, places like the island of Hawaii. When you're looking at these kind of things, not only will they put things in the air, but they also have the ability to put things in your mind, your ear, even your, your ideas. They're, they're able to inject persuasion. Let me show you that. There's a, an agent that's talking here, and he begins to expose this and how they sell this technology to the government agencies, the military can do this. So imagine, you see something in the sky and you hear a voice in your ear at the same time. Just imagine what that would do to people that don't have the Word of God in them at a high level. Now let's look at this clip. Again, this idea of being able to put sound anywhere you want to is really starting to catch on. It also works for transmitting and communicating data. It also works five times better underwater. Uh, we've got the military had just deployed some of these where you can put fake troop movements quarter of a mile away on a hillside <laughs> or you can whisper in the ear of a supposed some biblical verse <laughs> of serious and they have these infrared devices that can look at their countenance and see a fraction of a degree kelvin in temperature shift from 100 yards away when they play this thing. Uh, we make a version of this which puts out 155 decibels. Pain is 120. So it allows you to go nearly a mile away and communicate with people. And there can be a public beach just off to the side and they don't even know it's turned on. We sell those to the military presently for about $70,000. And they're buying them as fast as we can make them. So what's he saying? He's saying they can project voices in your ear. They can project thoughts and they can actually read your response to it by how your body changes at uh, the Kelvin degree and all this. And when you're looking at it, it's a serious deal. So imagine that. Imagine what he's saying, that they project something and then they tell you something about it in your ear. You feel that they are, that this thing you're seeing is now speaking to you, whether it's uh, telepathically or as a religious figure. This is, I believe, part of or in the spectrum or scope of a last day's deception that if possible, even the elect could be deceived. Now, the reason I'm bringing this out, and as we're here, please repost this. Somebody needs to see this right now. I'm telling you, this is really vital. The reason I'm bringing this out is because I believe we can't believe what we see. I mean, when you even got guys like uh, uh, 45 coming out and calling on on a new name for Biden, you know, saying that he is indeed uh, something else. You know, as a matter of fact, one of the names that's being used for him is the Manchurian candidate. And it's interesting that, that a few years ago, I began to say that, and sometimes I get these prophetic unctions to say it, and there's more to this than just, <clears throat> gee, he's, you know, having a hard time, he's having this. I actually believe I prophesied that, the Lord prophesied it to us, and it came through me, and it's been coming through me since 2020. But check out what, what uh, 45 says about uh, that candidate, and there's a reason I'm saying this, because you can't believe everything you're seeing right now, and that is why I'm going to land at hope today, but you got to stick with me, okay? Check this out. What does he say about him? I think it's the weakest our country has ever been. And I do think we have a Manchurian candidate. This is a president who's a Manchurian candidate. This is a president who's fully compromised. He's so afraid of... And the reason he's afraid is because I believe they paid him a tremendous amount of... The money, Red Dragon. And he doesn't want people to find out about it. He's talking about the Manchurian candidate, as we call him. He said this on August 9th, 2023. I want to show you one of the first times we ever said it on our live broadcast. We'll show you this clip here. I do believe that Biden is what I would like to call a Manchurian candidate, meaning he's a propped up puppet that's being marshaled around and led around by those that be in power on that side. I believe that God truly is bringing this out. Now, what's the big deal with it? Well, first of all, when you have leaders that are most likely not what they seem or who they seem, at least to some level or some regard. Now, could it just be that uh, the Manchurian candidate, as we've called him, is indeed um, 
a person that's just had a lot of cosmetic work done and so therefore his, his appearance is very different. Well, that could be. It also could be that he really is indeed a Scooby-Doo mask wearing uh, villain or actor. That could be. You know, there's, there's not, it wouldn't be the first time that people have had doubles in public and things like this. And you also realize that you have that type of narrative going on. I find it interesting that the Holy Spirit spoke this. Sometimes we're, we're broadcasting and I say things and now it's in the public where I call them this same name because I believe there's something the Lord is trying to tell us about this. And again, these things aren't to scare us and there's not, we can't do or change everything about this narrative, but what we can do is to be informed. We, we speak what we have freedom and a voice to speak and we speak out the word of God with truth and strength and we begin to bring revelation that will outgrow this yoke. I believe if enough of us are knowing the truth, we stand, we raise up a million clear-eyed, clear-minded reformers, we can begin to win over a billion and truly tip the scales in this world. Jesus told us to take dominion and occupy in the world. He told us to do that. Occupy till I return. It doesn't matter if you believe we're going to get caught up in a rapture or if you think we're going to be here for a long time going through tribulation. We got to occupy until the Lord returns, however that plays out. Now, I want to say this to you. I believe this is one of the reasons God gives us insights to things three years before it's said in the public, uh, the public way. We called him the Manchuria, then all of a sudden 45 calls him that. But you couple this type of deception of leadership together on some level, and then you realize they have the technology to deceive the masses, and you can begin to see a narrative that's converging for a future day of global deception that's really ultimately leading to the Antichrist. And you say, really? The Antichrist? Yes. Let me show you in the Bible what I'm talking about. If you would, go with me in your Bible very quickly to the book of Revelation chapter 13. I want to show you something from the scripture, Revelation chapter 13. This is really important. Let's put it up on the screen here in one second, Elijah. We'll go to Revelation chapter 13. Let's get a running start at it and go to uh, chapter 13, verse 13. Let's do that if we could. Revelation 13, 13. It says, and this is talking about the Antichrist and the beast, the false prophet, all this. But look, he says, he performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Now, I have a thought about this. Okay, I have, I have several thoughts uh, that I want to get into. And it's, it's very important that we look at this. Fire in the sight of men on the earth. He can call down fire. I believe this is technology. I believe this could have to do with a deception that is done through tech. Okay, and I'm going to talk about that further in just a moment. But look at this. It goes on to say in verse 14. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. Now, I could get way into this. There's scriptures that talk about maybe the beast is missing an eye. Uh, he might wear an arm patch, an arm seal. There's scriptures that elude to that, that the soldiers might actually wear his seal. I won't go down that road right now, but another time I will. But it does elude to that in scripture that maybe it's this. Now, it could be metaphorical and a bigger picture, but I'm going to show you at least one part that I think is very vital about this type of holographic end time AI deception. Let's keep going. Verse 15. He was granted power, now get this, to give breath to the image of the beast because the first beast was struck down, something happened catastrophically, and, and then there was a form of a resurrection that happened and also an image. And this image of the beast is basically, like it says, an image, a portrait. Uh, and you got to remember, this is written 2,000 years ago. So John the Revelator is saying, I see this image of the beast. He's there. And suddenly this picture, this image, he could have been looking at a digital holographic image, a statue, something, robotic even, who knows, right? But the image of the beast, meaning it's not the real beast, it's an image of the beast, that the image of the beast was what? It was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of that beast should both what speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be taken out, taken out. Now, this is very, very serious. And of course, this goes into the whole thing, the mark and all this. Let's go to verse 16, just because we're here. 
It goes into the mark of the beast, and this is what people begin to talk about. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand and on their foreheads, right? And, and to do what? Verse 17. And that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And I'll stop there, which goes into the whole triple six thing. But here's the point. The point is this. A lot of ink has been spilled over this topic, but when you look at the way society is going, you're reading the signs of the times. You're looking at the way deception is, at least in the culture with our Manchurian leadership, uh, you're looking at how these things are beginning to go. And if you're a discerning person, and I believe you are, you're beginning to recognize this is headed somewhere. And eventually, they will come to a point, and I believe we're out of here, I believe we're going to be out on the rapture, but you know what? If not, we're going to go through it, because no matter what, whether you believe in the rapture, and a lot of people that believe in it get really lazy in their faith, which is an absolute travesty to the gospel, what Jesus says. We're called to occupy and, and go after this culture for the gospel and the preaching of the kingdom. We have to do it. But in that picture, whether or not we go through all these things is beside the point. There will come a day that society in general, society in general will be absolutely under complete and total control of the Antichrist and this beast false prophet narrative. And they will use every available technology and uh, things at their means that are, that are available. And I believe this great deception is coming. So let me go to the board and talk about this just for a moment. We'll go to the magic vision board. Ain't nothing magic about it. This is a Holy Ghost board in Jesus' name. We don't do magic here. We do blessing here. We cast out a spirit of magic. Thank you, Jesus. But let me talk to you about this. When we're talking about the scripture here in Revelation 13. Okay, Revelation 13. We're talking about uh, the image of the beast. And it was given the ability to have breath. I'll say it a better way. It became animated. Okay. I believe it's very possible this image of the beast, what we're talking about here, is most likely a high-level tech. Um, and... artificial intelligence or what we call AI and you say really so why why do you come to that conclusion well when you begin to look at all that's happening you see just previous into, into that picture where these false prophet the beast the Antichrist and this is really what we're talking about here so I'll put him up here we're really talking about the Antichrist and his unholy trinity the the beast the false prophet and uh, the man of sin all these issues, right? You recognize this. The Antichrist. Now, there's a lot of people that talk about, well, who, who really is the Antichrist? Some people say 45 is the Antichrist. Some people say uh, that Obama could be that. Uh, that. That other people are saying, well, it's it's not just that. It's, it's so much of these uh, people that are out there that are. I don't think the Antichrist is seen on the stage yet. I don't think so, because he comes and unites the whole world in peace. And any of the candidates we see out there right now don't do that, just so we understand. But when we're looking at this picture of artificial intelligence, the beast, now let's just add this tech image in there. And I believe through tech, they'll be able to do what the Bible says and call down fire on demand. They'll call down fire on demand. They'll be able to just call fire down whenever they want to in the sight of men. So mankind, humanity, will look at this. They're going to observe this and they're going to say, my goodness, it's true. It's, it's all fire. I, they, they can do this stuff. I mean, who, who can do this? Surely this is truly the Messiah and people will be deceived. He'll begin to do this and this fire will happen. All these things will manifest. The beast, the false prophet, all of it. Then all of a sudden they will say, you've got to take the mark. Um, this is our system. This is for your good, your safety. Do this. If you don't take the mark, you can't buy, sell, do any of this stuff. Look, we've called fire down from heaven. Look, we are your Messiah. Look, we really created you. This could involve then everything from the UFO deception, which I think, um, which I really think 
Luke 21 may elude to when it's talking about things that are coming down upon the earth, the UFO deception, uh, you're seeing that, then I believe it could be that there could be a false religion. Because for the elect to be deceived, they would have to have a, a induced supernatural experience. This is why we can't let experiences guide us no matter what it is. This is why I teach this stuff all the time, that we got to let the Word of God be our standard. But when we're talking about induced supernatural experiences, what do I mean? Well, as we just talked about a moment ago, they could do this thing where they project something in the sky, they're calling fire down, which I think is probably their laser technology. Oh, no. Are those sharks with laser beams attached to their heads, right? Sharks with laser beams? I love you, Dad. Now, now, you recognize this, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, just let it go. Look at this here. You realize that it's lasers that could be doing this, or fire from the sky, or tech, right? This could be tech. Everything that the kingdom of darkness, the Antichrist, wants to bring is a perversion. It's a deception of what the Lord has brought to mankind through Jesus. You know, Elijah called fire down from heaven. Jesus, he went up into the sky. You begin to recognize this, and he said, I will return. They could project and say, truly, we are your Messiah. And as they're calling fire down, as they bring UFO deception to the earth, all of these things, they could then use holographic tech. And they, through this holographic tech, could begin to say, um, we are aliens. And this will really be you know, one of three things, right? One, two, three. This is either high tech, that, that is UFOs, or it's Blue Beam, as we're talking about right now. Because that's really what this is, Project Blue Beam. Or it's, you know, the real thing. It's, it's uh, fallen angels making appearances. So when I say there's no such thing as aliens, I mean it except to the fact that these things really are appearing. There's real stuff out there. It just happens to be a false deception. But there really are entities appearing. Now, when you're looking at this, the deception from Luke 21, men's hearts failing them, all of this, you look at Matthew 24 into 25, and it says, if possible, even the elect, the elect could be deceived. How would that happen? Well, in my opinion, and the way I read the Bible, and I could be wrong, but I'm telling you, I just think this is possible, that if they begin to say, okay, there's a UFO or a false religion appearing in the sky, one of the messianic figures or some other religion, or the Antichrist coming and saying, I am Jesus, right? And you begin to see this, then they, they begin to, through this, induce a supernatural experience, and then they're able to talk, as this video we showed earlier, uh, to their mind or their ear, they're able to do that. That would only add to this, this encounter of deception, right? This would be a symphony of deception. And then eventually they project the holograms. They're talking in their mind. They're saying all this stuff. They can almost make you feel things, sense things, project that upon you. And then you're seeing and hearing it at the same time. If you didn't have the word of God, I mean driven in your heart to discern according to Hebrews... 5.14. We don't teach this stuff just for giggles, guys. Hebrews 5.14, it says, the reason of use, exercise your senses. And this is talking about your five senses. Okay? Not some spiritual weird sense. Your five senses. Why? Because if you don't get these under control of the Word of God, when this kind of stuff comes, the five senses will deceive people, even the elect, who are so driven by the natural. Driven by their natural five senses. You've got to sharpen your spiritual discernment. So if any voice, like Paul said, if whether it's us uh, uh, or some angel that comes and speaks to you, anything other than what the Bible says, let them be anathema. Let them be cursed. Send them away. They are not of God. He said, if an angel from God, from heaven, any angel appears and begins to speak some truth or information to you opposing or different than what the Bible explicitly says, reject it. 
And I think that's a very powerful thing. And the only way you can do that is if you had this popped into your head, you got things you're seeing in the sky, then you got fire coming down from the sky, which is probably technology, all this stuff coming at you. If you don't begin to baptize yourself in this book, in the Word of God, here's what's going to happen. Here's what's going to happen. Even the elect could be deceived because the only way you don't is to get your five senses totally conformed to this book. I've had entities appear to me. I've had things appear to me supernaturally over the years when I was a kid. Sometimes even today, if I'm alone in the dark and something happens, I'm, I'm jarred by some of the crazy encounters I had as a kid. And I got to remember, Jesus is Lord. I'm fine. I'm fine. But it's because the enemy comes with a smoke screen, a deception, angels of light. And angels of light will be very persuasive, especially when they got this mess giving them power, which is humanity worshiping them, opening up all these abilities. And here you begin to see that happens. The antidote to it is to exercise your five senses to Romans 12, discipline your mind, your will, your emotions, bring it under the authority, every thought captive to the authority of Jesus, and you become disciplined in the Word of God. So no matter what you see, feel, taste, touch, or hear, or sense in your emotions, you're not moved. You're not moved. And then you can't be deceived. Well, I'd like to give you an update on the building project, where we're at, how it's going. As many of you know, we've acquired a brand new building. We're calling it the World Broadcast Center, and we acquired it for one fourth of its total value. It's an amazing gift from God. And we're so thankful to you and many of you who are watching, standing with us, whether you're a partner or a viewer, we encourage you. I would like to simply ask you if you would help us move the ball down the field. Right now, I'm meeting with our, our team, uh, Joshua Coley, many of the leaders are helping us remodel. We're getting experts in to really build the blueprint of where we want to go. This building will include two major studios, meeting space, executive offices for our team, plenty of parking for the style and size of studio meetings we want to do. And I got to tell you, it's just the tip of the iceberg. It is a gift from God that we got this. I'm blown away at what the Lord has done. It is a wonderful thing and it's marvelous in our eyes. If you're interested in helping us get this building paid in full by the end of the year, we sure would appreciate that. We're believing God for your victory, your breakthrough, and every person that sows in this, that you will have great increase in your life. Well, I am so thankful you're here. You know, this ministry is expanding. We are growing and it is to the glory of the Lord. And I wanna say something to every partner here, whether you are a recent partner or been with us a very long time. From the bottom of our heart, thank you. Partners, because of you, we're taking territory, we're building new media all the time, we're advancing, we're putting out written materials and giving away content all over the world and we're so grateful to you for it. You send us on journeys that cost nothing to the people who are bringing us in. And I wanna say simply to you, thank you. Now, if you wanna join our partner family and you're watching, I encourage you to do so today. You go to josephz.com or you can text the keyword GIVE to 719-259-0029. If you join our partner family, you're gonna hear from us. We will love on you, we will pray for you, we will stand with you over all your dreams and your visions. And I'm telling you what, Heather and I, we constantly are praying for our partners. So please consider, if you're on the fence, join the partner family and let's do this thing together, both in prayer and generosity. We believe that God is going to make all your purpose destiny and dreams come to pass. We're standing with you for it. So thank you for considering partnering with us today. Again, you go to josephz.com. We have a lot of territory to take and we wanna do it together. God bless you. Remember, on a bad day, you're the best there is and you are called to be and shine the light in darkness. I'll see you again next time right here as we continue bringing a now word of the Lord. God bless you.